Hello everybody, I just wanted to go over the unique items that we know about so far in Diablo 4 that are going to be coming out for the Druid. So first off in the Helm slot we have Temptus Roar. Storm skills have up to a 15 to 25 percent chance to grant 4 spirit and your base storm skills are now also werewolf skills. So this is pretty good actually because if you're running Storm Strike it turns that into a werewolf skill so things like passives where it says your werewolf skills deal X amount increased damage or your werewolf skills deal X poison poisoning damage to things, that's going to now affect your base storm skills, which would be like wind shear. I, I want to say it's going to be wind shear and storm strike that this would apply to. So pretty sweet. It also gives you a ton of extra spirit generation. So I'm, I'm, a, I'm a pretty big fan of this. Damage wall shape shifted, poison resistance, max spirit, and life on kill. Pretty sweet. The next thing the Druid is going to have access to is going to be in Daryl's Visage. So all stats, attack speed, life steal, poison resistance. Now we don't know exactly how much poisoning damage this is going to do, but because we know that poison is going to be a pretty big theme for Druid, this is probably going to be a pretty solid item uh, because, you know, with all the things like increased damage to poisoned enemies and stuff like that, this could potentially even be something that a lot of builds wear as a Druid just to get the Paragon stuff, just to be able to proc all the poison things from the Paragon. So I'm, I'm thinking this one is going to be pretty good. I believe that's it for the helm slot. Oh, sorry, there is there is two more. Harlequin Crest, Maximum Life, Cooldown Reduction, Crafting Material. Now these are general ones that all classes have skill to, but gain 10 to 20% damage reduction. In addition, gain plus four ranks to all skills. Pretty solid. Getting plus four ranks to any skill is a pretty, gonna, it's gonna be a pretty big damage increase. And it's also gonna give you access to using skills that maybe you ran out of points for, so you weren't able to do it or maybe you just need a certain amount of points to get the maximum amount of damage out of certain things it's gonna I mean plus four ranks you're pretty much I mean when you put this on you're pretty much making it to where you have to put one point into your skills in order to max them out so this this will give you just crazy build diversity if you're able to find this unique so Vastly's Prayer. Your Earth skills are now also Werebear skills and fortify you. This is pretty big as well because whenever you do things like changing Earth skills and saying they're also now also Werebear skills, that gives you access to more damage multipliers on the Paragon board. Uh, it fortifies you for however much, which that's just nuts in itself. Like that's cr that's crazy good. Like that's that's very that's that's an amazing. Uh, that's there, we're gonna see a lot of cool builds come out of that. All right, moving into the chest slot we have we're gonna start with insatiable fury physical damage over power damage damage reduction while fortified and armor while in werebear form werebear form is now your true form and you gain plus two ranks to our werebear skills that's just like a staple for a werebear build because werebear builds are going to be very big they're going to have a lot of fortify built in overpower built in armor built in just because their paragon boards for the werebear stuff all has like a bunch of armor stuff like that's just Pretty solid, pretty solid. Going down to Mad Wolf's Glee. Physical damage, poison damage, damage reduction from poisoned enemies, movement speed, werewolf form is now your true form, and you gain plus two ranks to all werewolf skills. Again, same thing, just solid. Everything the werewolf does good on an item, plus two ranks to all werewolf skills. And remember, your Temptus Roar made your base storm skills into werewolf skills, so they would actually get plus, so your Storm Strike, your Wind Shear, if you were doing some build like that, would get plus two ranks from this as well and would also benefit, so that's pretty solid. Now going down to Razor Plate, gain X Thorns. Now we don't know how much this is, so I'm not sure how good this is going to be, and Thorns got really nerfed, so I'm, I'm really not thinking this is going to be that great of a unique, but who knows, maybe it comes out, it's going to have a lot of damage on it, I don't know. Moving on into the Pants slot, we have Storm's Companion. So this is one I'm pretty excited for. Your Wolf Companions are infused with the power of the Storm, dealing lightning damage and gaining the storm howl ability i don't know what storm howl does but that just sounds cool so like just it changes them to lightning damage so now all of a sudden they get they're going to benefit from anything that does a lightning damage increase and i don't know what storm howl does but i hope it's cool it does companion skill damage companion movement speed potion drop chance and plus ranks to wolf so if you're even if you're just doing a companion wolf build these are this is going to be an amazing pair of pants like just absolutely amazing another uh, the next item temerity effects that heal you beyond 100 percent life Life, grant you a barrier for up to 40 to 80 percent of your max life that lasts for eight seconds this is going to be pretty good if you have overhealing so i know the druid if you take the dire wolf aspect thing argus legendary it will make your grizzly rage heal you when you kill thing for 10 percent of your hp so there's a lot of synergy here to just infinitely create a barrier and if you can cre infinitely create a barrier by overhealing 
you can then run the amulet of the conceited aspect where it gives you extra damage while you have a barrier up. So I think Temerity is going to be really good as well. Also having movement speed built in by using your potion, pretty solid. I'd say, you know, I think the only... God, I think all of the Druidine uniques so far have been uh, pretty, pretty solid. So let's go over here to the gloves. Now, there's not any, like, druid theme gloves, but they do have Fists of Fate they have access to, which is a general one. Your attacks randomly deal 1% to 200 to 300% of their normal damage. Lucky hit, chance to heal. Lucky hit, chance to restore primary resource. Lucky hit, immobilize. Lucky hit, daze. Like, that's just, that's just such a funny item. Like, that's going to be a fun item to just mess with. Uh, Frostburn, lucky hit, up to a 15-25% to 25 chance to freeze enemies for 2 seconds. Now, that's not going to be too great for the Druid, but for the Sorcerer, I think that could actually end up, you know, there could be a potential Frost build or some way for the Sorcerer to use that to their advantage. Because I think if, like, when they freeze enemies, it makes them vulnerable. So that's actually, that could be pretty good on the Sorcerer, but not really so much the Druid. So, Boots, uh, Pentient Greaves, this is another general one. You leave behind a trail of frost that chills enemies. You deal 7-10% to more damage to chilled enemies. So not that great on the druid. They don't have access to chill in any other way other than these boots. If they did, it would just be a, like a 7-10% to damage increase, which is kind of cool. So you have dodge chance while evading, movement speed, crowd control duration, reduced duration of enemy slow and cold resistance. So for rogue, for uh, I think for rogue and sorcerer this might be good. Not so much for druid. So now going into weapons. <laughs> So, first thing, we have Great Staff of the Crone. This is unique. I am by far the most excited for. Damage to crowd-controlled enemies, damage to close enemies, damage to crowd-controlled enemies, non-physical damage, ranks to Claw. Claw is now a Storm skill and also casts Storm Strike at 120 to 150% normal damage, which means it's like at 20 to 50% increased damage, I think. I don't think it's actually 150. The way that reads, I think it's just 20 to 100, to, or sorry, 20 to 50% increased damage. So that's pretty cool because it makes Claw a Storm skill. So it's kind of the same thing with Temptus Roar where it's making your Storm skills Werewolf skills where now you get this kind of dual benefit where both your Storm Strike and Claw are now going both ways and benefiting from Storm stuff and Werewolf stuff. I think it's pretty cool. It's also a damage increase. It's This is definitely, definitely something that's going to be super sweet. Next we have a couple of general ones. We have the Butcher's Cleaver. Uh, damage to healthy enemies, damage to crowd controlled enemies, critical strike damage, critical strike chance, damage to injured enemies. When you critically strike an enemy you have up to 100% chance to fear and slow them for 40 to 75 percent i don't really think this is that great but i mean it's the butcher's cleaver so it's cool looking if nothing else and you have waxing gibius i mean there could be some niche build where maybe you need the slow you have waxing gibius damage to healthy enemies critical strike damage damage to injured enemies life on kill ranks to shred and that's actually pretty interesting because it gives ranks to shred so if you're doing a core skill build around shred this could be pretty good Gain stealth for two seconds when killing enemies with shred. Breaking stealth when an attacks grants ambush, which guarantees critical strikes for one second. So this is actually very... This is pretty interesting, okay? And the reason why I think this is interesting is because I think... You know, the companion build might find some weird use for this. And the reason why I say that is because you have that boon that's going to reset your uh, cooldowns for your companions, uh, or there's a chance to whenever you crit. So if you have guaranteed crits, you're just increasing the chance to reset your actives on your companion skills, which I think could be pretty good. And I mean, you know, obviously just guaranteed critting with Shred is also just pretty good in itself on top of getting ranks to Shred. So that could potentially be something pretty sweet. Going into amulets, I believe there is, yeah, so you have Melted Heart of Seleg, all stats, core skill damage, damage while healthy, resource regen, gain plus 30% max resource, in addition, when you take damage, drain 3 to 6 resource for every 1% life you would have lost instead. So that's actually kind of interesting as a defensive legendary. I mean, it takes up the amulet slot, which kind of blows, because that's probably why they made it so solid as a defensive legendary, because you really don't want to give up that plus 50% to an affix. I think most builds probably aren't going to run that because they're giving up too much, but still cool for what it is. Maybe there's some niche builds that come out that, uh, that make really good use of this. I don't know. Next, going into rings. And here we have Hunter Zenith. So this is pretty cool. So lightning resist, poison resist, damage while shapeshifted, critical strike damage while in werewolf form, overpower damage while in werebear form, and ranks to quick shift. <laughs> So Quick Shift, I believe, is a uh, skill passive. So it's a passive in your skill tree that 
uh, it gives you, and I, I want to say, hold on, uh, I think it's down here. Yeah, so when shape-shifting skill transforms you into a different form, it deals 5% increased damage. Yeah, so that's, okay, I am not crazy. So, um, the idea, oh, where'd you go, Hunter's in this? Oh, that'd probably help if I was, you know, on the right one. Okay, so ranks to quick shift, so gain a bonus when you kill with a shape-shifting skill. Werewolf, your next non-ultimate werebear skill costs no resource and has no cooldown. Werebear, your next werewolf skill will heal you for X when damage is first dealt. So that's actually pretty cool because some of the werebear skills have like, you know, like trample has a 14 second cooldown. So if you time this right, you can just get a trample that does, that has no resource cost and no cooldown or, you know, etc, etc. So that's pretty cool. Um, I don't know how this is going to be used exactly, but I do think there's potential in it for sure for a hybrid, you know, werewolf, werebear build. Because there are legendaries that are going to end up comboing and stuff with that. So that will be a build. Uh, will this hunter's zenith, you know, make the cut? I do not know. Then we go, so Mother's Embrace, if a core skill hits five or more enemies, 20 to 40% of the resources are funded, critical strike chance, critical strike damage, overpower damage, core skill damage, fire and cold resist. So this is eh, pretty solid. I think this will find a place in core skill builds in some way, shape, or form. You know, obviously some of these uniques are just going to be more niche for more niche builds, but not bad. And then we have, I believe there's one more. Yeah, so the Ring of Starless Skies. Lightning resistance, shadow resistance, all stats, lucky hit chance, damage to crowd controlled enemies, core skill damage. Each consecutive core skill cast reduces the resource cost of your next core skill by 8 to 12% up to a maximum of 40%. I'm not certain how good this is going to be on the druid. This is a general one, but it doesn't seem that bad. I think maybe for other classes it might be a little bit better because I think there's a lot of overlap between this and some of the other uniques that the druid has and things they have access to. But yeah, so that is that is all the uniques that we have seen so far and have access to in terms of the general ones uh, that the druid has access to and in terms of just the druid specific ones. So hope this gave you guys some good ideas. Hope it made you excited just like I am. Uh, like, subscribe if you like the video, and I will see you next time.